right, you're looking a bit green. I should have sucked the lager. Remember that bottle of whiskey you bought for Christmas? Oh, self-inflicted wounds get no sympathy. Thanks for nothing. Well, enjoy it while you can. A couple of years from now, it'll be the patter of tiny feet keeping you up late. At least I won't be feeling like this. <laughs> you will when you get your bank statements. Did you ever have these conversations with our Robert? Oh, he won't settle down till he's in his 90s. And that's me being optimistic. <laughs> Robert! Morning! Oh, this is great, isn't it? I'm so happy. Yeah, cold toast and stewed tea. I could die with excitement. Sorry, did we keep you awake last night? Well, the way you were laughing, you'd think you were in bed with Eddie is that? <laughs> I don't mind. At you could swap clothes. Don't look at me like that. It is important to nurture a man's self-esteem. <laughs> like Rob's head ain't big enough already. Oh, come on, you've got to admit he is funny. She thinks she's big-headed. Oh, me? Mm -hmm. Never. But I thought I'd put some clothes on before I came down. Can't have two women ogling my six-pack, can I? Oh, oh, your buns aren't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> come on, I'll miss the bus, Donna. Well, I'll give you both a lift in, if you like. I'm happy with the bus, thanks. Don't be daft. Oh, it's all heart, aren't you? Yeah, I'll do that if you like. You'll be late. Feeling a bit off colour, actually. Uh, I am perfectly capable. I know. Yeah, besides, Viv's going to take him for a couple of hours while I have my physio. Are you sure? Didn't seem too keen for to have him yesterday when it was all arranged. Yeah, I were a bit hasty. But if some people had a bit more faith in me being able to look after my son... Look, love, it was you that were desperate to go to work. Why'd you have to assume it's about you? I just happen to have a headache, that's all. Oh, isn't that usually my line? Stay off of you, poorly. No, if you can face the day's events, so can I. What is the problem here? Nothing. I'll get tea. Bye. I'll never fall in love again. Is that a promise? Life will be so much easier. This is the nearest I've been to a date in weeks. And not the first cabbage you've hooked up with, either. Diane. What? Me sap's up. How far? Burston point. Well, let's hope it drops again sharpish. That's not why Marlon's gone, is it? You haven't made a pass at him, I hope. What do you take me for? An insensitive slut? You're supposed to be offering me advice here. When in doubt, shred a carrot. Who can I have? Who would you like? Zach Dingle. Have you ever seen Lisa deck somebody? You don't want to go there. Keen. A jailbird and a complete nutter. Well, no, that's usually a plus for you. No, I've learned me lesson. Liar. Ashley? The father of my grandchild? I think not. Ethan? The mad monk? No, I've answered my own question there, haven't I? There's got to be someone. Have you thought of looking further afield? Like New Zealand? But not before you finish preparing this salad. You do realise you're actually meant to be working in here. It's all these root vegetables got us going in the first place. If you were any kind of sister, you'd lend us Jack for the afternoon. You'd never keep up. God loves a try, eh? I'll leave you to your cabbage. You make a perfect pair. Yeah, <laughs> but will he commit? Get on that bench, you. And none of your filthy talk. They were the last words Marlon said before he left his house. Uncle, he said, you're in charge of our room. Don't let anyone sleep in my bed. Oh! Yeah, well, even if that is true... Which it isn't. Yeah, I decide who sleeps where. And me. Yeah, and her. Well, it's not right me keeping on the sofa. Belle gets a shock every morning when she comes down. Well, take your fright mask off, then. She can't, that's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I I've got a business. Yeah, good lad, proud of you. Yeah, me, me head ground, I I'm the pigs. So, so I should swap with Shadrach because I need more room for me paperwork. Oh, since what have used tissues counted as paperwork? Look, is it any wonder that Marlon has gone away? That is Marlon's room and it'll stay Marlon's room. The poor lad has had enough poor people as it is. Oh, well said, Lisa. Oh. What upheavals Marlon had? Only his wife dying. Nothing for you to concern yourself over. You know, I'd had four wives the time I was his age. I've often wondered, is he homosexual? Well, it's a pity you weren't. You'd save a lot of women a lot of heartache. Morning. Hi. You should have told me you are walking out and giving me a lift. I'm only five minutes late. Oh, good night, yeah. Look, Terry's right. I should never have taken the job in the first place. I'm sorry, you're going to have to sort something else out. Dawn! Dawn, don't be daft! It was a friendly kiss, for God's sake! I'll broadcast it, why don't you? 
<laughs> what are you going to tell Terry when he get in? He expects me to fail. Everybody does. I'm not chasing you, if that's what you think. Hello? Mom, he's driving me mad. Look, you tell him. Tell him what? I, I, I know I'm probably fretting about nothing, but... Ah, you can admit that to her, but not to me. Oh, I'll come back when you finish no. your half, shall I? Uh, have you heard from him yet? Oh, he's a big lad, Alan. Don't worry. He's probably visiting family on the way to Mandy's. Thank you. There's a lot of us, Alan. Exactly what I said. Millions of them. I mean, these dingles breed like rabbits. What? I could have said rats. You're ten minutes late now. You can't sack me, I've resigned. And anyway, I thought you said you weren't going to chase me. I'm going to pick up some rent. Look, it was a mad moment. Your husband's ill, you're saddled with a kid. And I'm dropped there gorgeous, what can I say? Who the hell do you think you are? Look, Terry would understand. Even he knows a bit of eye candy when he sees it. Look, it's all I can do not to snog myself every time I look in the mirror. But that's better. Now go and make yourself a cup of coffee. I'll be back in half an hour. And no more stomping off. It's killing my clutch. Well, if you ever get tired of Bob, let us know. The day I get tired of my Bob is the day they lower me into the ground. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to avoid you. <laughs> Don't worry. Five seconds, we'll have it done. I've just been winding Bib up. Oh, you're fitting round here, then. Keep your eyes on the road, love. Don't want you crashing into them hills you're gulping at. I'm sorry. Can't blame a lad for looking. I'll, um... <clears throat> Forgot what I came in for now. Can't imagine why. Oh, I can say without fear of contradiction that were the finest fry up I've had. Oh. Today. oh, you've always got to undermine me at the last second. Superb, Jeff. Thank it's you. Needed more salt, though. Mm. Uh, excuse me. Well, what are you done? You know them numbers down the side of the menu? Well, they're prices. <laughs> what a comedian. <laughs> so we don't drag after you. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. See ya. Is that them gone? Mmm, and they thoroughly enjoyed it. Paid? Yeah, plus a tip. I know they're family, but you have to be vigilant. I got my eye on you. Don't you forget it. How could I? When you're a cyclops. He's a bit younger. Mm-hmm. But definitely interested. I caught him checking me boobs. A blind man could see them things looming. Between you and Louise, I feel suffocated sometimes. Or jealous. Shut up. Shut up yourself. Who is it? me up sometimes. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you chance you keeping your distance? Who are you from? Me and Andy. We do not want you hanging round all the time. Yeah, well, I haven't had any complaints from him. See you later, Sharon. What's going on? I'll just butt out for five seconds, will you? We're trying to have a private conversation. I'll be along in a minute, all right? You should really take something for that pre-menstrual thing you've got going on. Yeah, maybe that's because I didn't get any sleep last night. <laughs> well, maybe you should be doing it yourself instead of wigging into others. You've made a right show yourself now. Get over it, Katie. I have. <laughs> don't seem interested in the house. Or me. Well, maybe you've been cutting her out. Well, she's the one that wants to get away. She jumped to that job at home farm. You've never considered she might be doing it for the money? Do you think I'm just a whinging bloke? <laughs> yeah. But don't take it personally. It's a blanket prejudice. <laughs> Personal question. Mm hmm Have you slept together since the stroke? I take it you don't mean sharing the same bed? It'll go no further than me and uh, anyone I could find in the pub. 
It's been months, Terry. You must both be feeling pretty frustrated. I don't really know where to start. Well, I'll start with your wife. She's there. She likes you already. And it's less effort than trailing the streets. I've got a knife in my hand here. Hi. I obviously got the wrong end of the stick about Danny. Keep it to yourself, eh? <laughs> Hi, Donna. But well, I'm sorry. What for? Well, we just had a misunderstanding. Well, don't you misunderstand this. If she catches anything, I'm blaming you, making her stay in that filthy farmhouse while your husband's out all night with the sheep. You're married now. Get used to being alone. Out with the sheep? They had to say something. Yeah, apart from the truth, Donna. She got ballistic if she knew I was sleeping with Robert. All right, so I caught the flat bin instead of him. You're supposed to be a me. Yeah, so are you. Not that you'd notice since you got yourself a boyfriend. Well, how about you give me 10% off and I'll take you out for a drink? Hang on a second. Is it all right if I go? I've finished everything. Yeah, of course it is. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll tell Zoe you're flating on company time. Hey, it's a perk of the job. We are all right, me and you, Mum. Yeah, of course we are, yeah. Sorry about that. Where were we? I just don't get it. One minute you're pushing us together, the next minute you're making sly little digs about him. Look, this is exactly what I didn't want to happen, Donna. You and me arguing about Robert. He ain't worth it. Well, what is it to you anyway? You're obviously intent on making our place your cosy little knocking shop. I won't call it cosy. You what? Look, do you want us to wash up more? Is that why you're getting at him? Donna, you don't know him like I do. I think you'll find I know him a hell of a lot better considering he's my boyfriend. You could do so much better than him. Oh, get stuffed, you patronising little cow. I know what this is all about. You're jealous. I am not, Donna. We can do what we like and go wherever we want. It's not our fault you've tied yourself for life to a load of dumb animals. And I'm including Andy in that, by the way. <laughs> OK, so how come you're so keen to play old married couple at our place then if the world's your oyster? Donna, you're degrading yourself over someone who don't even care about you just cos you're desperate to bag a bloke. I'm surprised you haven't got yourself up the duff to try and trap him. It's the only way you'll hang on to him. And even then, I won't put a bet on it. Get out. We've got loads of places we can go. We don't even need you. Yeah, the bush shelter's about your style. <laughs> More exciting than your place, you sad little housewife. I'm drop dead, Donna. After you. Nothing but not polite. Siobhan reckons I'm coming on leaps and bounds. Great. So I thought I'd enter myself for the London Marathon. No, you don't want to overdo it. Don. What? It'd be obvious to anyone who was paying the slightest bit of attention that I couldn't possibly run a marathon. So what'd you say it for, then? I was joking. I was trying to entertain you, you know, ha-ha. You open your mouth and a noise comes out. Terry, you can see that I'm busy. I've got to do the tea and then get TJ from Viv's. Well, he's upstairs asleep. And there's a fish pie in the oven that I brought from Viv's. Why didn't you say that? Well, why didn't you ask? And have you lost your sense of smell? I mean, the place stinks of attic. I suppose it does, actually. Well, tea's all done, baby's asleep. Dominoes. Actually, uh, I was thinking that maybe you could do with a little lie down. Oh, thanks, Terry. I'm knackered. No, I meant with me. Really? Yeah. I'm sick of living in a flat chair. I want my wife back. Let's go upstairs and see if we can find her then. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know I was only supposed to be 15 minutes, but I got caught up with something at home. I don't know why you bothered to come back at all. It won't happen again. We've all heard that before. I had to ask Louise to cover while I took TJ down to Terry's. You can't muck about when it comes to children, you know. I don't know, she's managed to lose hers twice. Say that again. That's enough. Do you know the kind of thing she said about you behind your back? Well, of course I do. She works with Bob, doesn't she? The point is, she was here and you weren't, she doesn't even work here. Consider this a formal warning. Well done. I've only been here a couple of days. Hi. Should we go out to Kath for his tea? 
Oh, we've already used the facilities today, son. <laughs> well, that's not fair. How come you two get freebies and I don't? You've got all the eggs in the world to eat for now. What are you complaining about? Uh, uh, any word from Marlon yet? Oh, sorry, Alan. I haven't got my mobile phone switched on. Didn't know you had one. I haven't. That's why it's not switched on. <laughs> hey, hey, I haven't. Oh, I'm expecting Mandy to ring in half an hour. Oh, what a relief. Yeah. Hey, uh, oh, yeah. I've just had Mandy on the phone. Hey, well, I hope she rang you because she could go on for hours and hours when she's on a roll. <sighs> Apparently, he's not turned up. Huh? Well, he'll stopped off on the way. Well, that's what I told him earlier, but no, nobody's seen night nor air. Oh, don't tell Alan. I don't want an heart attack on top of a missing person. You worry me now. <sighs> I bet he's in a gay club. All right. Someone's talking to you. Oh, sorry, but I'm gripped by the racing results. Ah, uh, go get a table, will you? I'll bring the drinks over. That's OK. I'll, I'll wait here. Do as he says, son. I need to blast Rodney's lugs off. It could take a while. Six cases of red, you told me, on Monday. Yes. So how come it was two cases of white when they came this morning? Give the man a chance to get a drink. Thank you, Val. Are you buying, then? You're on your own, Rodders. Now, you see, sometimes when you're on the friends and family race... Friends and flaming family. All I am is the suck of the paste top whack for plunk I haven't even ordered. I could jump on a bag of grapes myself. It'd still be an improvement on that rubbish. Terry! D just see to the baby. It don't matter. What was all that about? Oh, nothing, really. It's just... Just enough to make you cry? Oh, I don't know. I just feel like I can't shake her off sometimes. <laughs> Imagine what it's like for our other. Yeah, she was just getting on my nerves, that's all. <sighs> Come here. She ain't that bad, really. <sighs> well, considering who her mother is, you're lucky this is the first flower night you've had. Things aren't always going to go smoother with the daughter of Ives, are they? Oh. Let's get going. Why, what you got on? Well, I've got to do the jobs I should have done last night when I was getting jumped with your friend and our kid. We did have a good night, though, didn't we? Yeah. Is that right, girl, with me? Yeah, so do I, if you don't shut up. Victoria. She's out. Got her friends. It's only half six. Can I go to bed now? Oh, yeah, well, let's sit and watch telly with my dad. And then I'll ask if you can sleep with me tonight. In fact, why don't we bring your mum and ask her as well, eh? Right? Marlon! Lanky Marlon! Have you seen him? Oh, I give up. Deaf Dave Dingle from Devon. Honestly, why are we an hearing aid on one ear and then that's the phone with the other? Because he's all so devious, Deaf Dave Dingle. Unless there's money in it, you don't want to know. Oh, well, I've tried about everybody I can think of. Oh, oh no, Louise. She wasn't in the pub when I called earlier. Uh, too busy working a magic in the calf getting me a formal warning. Oh, not already. Well, she was saying stuff about Aaron. Oh, you've got to learn to turn the other cheek, love. <sighs> I'm going to have that cow. She won't leave me alone. I don't even think about it. It's Marlon we should be fretting about now, not some playground punch above yours. Oh, ring Mandy again. Well, Simon would go mad if he saw what we'd done to this. <laughs> not for me, thanks. You can't just not eat anything. Well, just add it to the list of other things that I can't do. Hey, where are you going? Pub. You are not. Look, I put it off all this time because I was scared that I wouldn't be able to do it. And now that I've proved that I can't, there's not a lot else to be said. I don't think they do physio for that department. Oh, so I'm supposed to live the rest of my life like a nun, yeah? Selfish, selfish pig. What? It might have escaped your notice, but millions of people have a perfectly happy sex life without everything working perfectly. I don't know, maybe it's a generational thing. She... Most men of your age think it all revolves around that department and the rest of it's not worth bothering with. Have you never heard the expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat? Yeah. 
But not in that context. <laughs> oh, you sit down. Eat your pie. I'll have mine when I come back down. Callio, if you don't mind me saying... See you away. You're looking incredibly groomed this evening. So did Sherka. Look what happened to him. It's always nice to see a woman taking a pride in her appearance. I used to be impressed by the rubbish that come out of Rodders. Still is great with kids, mind. Just taking your boyfriend home to read him a bedtime story. <laughs> oh, Diane. <laughs> Laugh and the world laughs at your feelings. Do you really think I went through these past few months waiting for you to recover so we could get our sex life back on track? I thought there were more to marriage than that. Yeah, well, you've got to admit that it's important. I bet you thought about it. I know I have. Well, spending weeks in a hospital surrounded by nurses, I bet you thought a little else. Well, you're the doctors to look at. Most of them were women, Terry. <sighs> well, lucky old me, eh? I suppose you think I'm a chauvinist pig. Look, I know you've been nervous about us going to bed together, but it shouldn't stop us talking, kissing, having a cuddle in front of the TV. You're that busy trying to prove to everyone that you can cope with TJ. Well, I can. See, there you go again. Some stuff you're great at and other stuff you're not, regardless of whether you've had a stroke or not. Come here. Hey. How's that? A bit weird. You sat on the remote, you idiot. <laughs> How about now? Better. Good. There's only one thing missing. What's that? A beer. I missed you so much. Hey, you can cry as much as you like. It's still your turn to get the beer. 